Fingerings are very important for the interpretation because different fingerings make a different sound quality. Think of the four strings of the violin, they all sound very different and you can play the same passage with different fingerings on different strings and that makes a total different sound and it will be a different expression like that. On the other hand, fingerings are very important to master technical passages, to find a possibility to play clean and for that you need the right fingering. And it's great that in the Hindle app we have different fingerings to compare each other and to use the best possible version. Fingerings can change an interpretation very much. I would like to give you a little example. This motif of the D minor sonata of Brahms. See it now in the fingering by Christian Tetzlaff. In the fourth position on the D string. Now, what about a historic fingering by Osip Schnirlin? Osip Schnirlin was a student of Josef Joachim. So there is a good link to Brahms because of the friendship Brahms-Joachim. Unfortunately, there is no fingering by Joachim, but of his student Osip Schnirlin. And the fingering is like that. It sounds maybe strange to us today, but it is historic. It is uh, a fingering here with flageolet and with glissando. Let's now check a fingering from another student of Josef Joachim, Leopold Auer. Even more glissando because no flageolet here and the fingering 4-4. Four, four. Leopold Auer did his edition of the Brahms sonatas in 1917. So it's something like an essence of his teaching because by that he had already taught his great students, Heifetz, Elman, Tosha Seidel, Zimbalis and all the others. So this gives, gives us great insight in uh, the history of violin playing. With the Boeings it's the same idea. They also can change an interpretation and the phrase completely. For example, think of the main theme of the Frühlingssonate by Beethoven. That is the poem from Igor Osim to start it with downbow. And that means that the third bar in this phrase, this D minor with the G, is something like an aim. You go to the third bar because it's downbow. And the downbow naturally is a little bit more heavy than the upbow. Listen to it again. Now, Henrik Schering has a different idea. He starts it with upbow, and that means that for him the fourth bar in this phrase, when we go to G minor, is the most important bar, because it will be in downbow. I think that's absolutely fascinating to compare the different ideas of the different players. It gives you the possibility to have a library under your arm and you don't have only the great compositions, but you also have something like a history of violin playing always with you when you compare all the fingerings and bowings of actual artists and of historic artists.